Hey folks, today we're going to go over some of my favourite features of Procreate. I've decided not to cover every single menu, but instead focus on things that I feel people are going to miss. This is going to be a really fast video, so strap in and let's get going. The brush menu is filled with fantastic brushes from Procreate, plus any that you import or make yourself. I'll make a video on how to make brushes another time, but for this one, you might want to organise brushes that you use frequently to better suit you. To do that, press the plus button up here and it will make a new set. You can now grab brushes and organise them really handy if you find yourself bouncing around the brush menu a lot. The colour wheel is a super useful feature for painters. Here's some tricks that maybe you didn't know. If you drag up here, you can pop out the colour wheel so that you can use it as a floating window and it stays open while you work. If you accidentally pick a colour and want to go back to the last one that you had, press and hold on this colour icon and it will take you back to your previous selection. In the Harmony tab, you can use the colour space here to define palettes based on your selection. You can have different models by tapping on the name up here and pick a model that you like. Really handy for generating colour schemes. If you want to learn what these terms mean, then Light and Colour by James Gurney is a great resource. I'll also leave a link in the helpful description too. Finally, if you're working with something that requires a hex code, you can copy and paste them here in the value tab. While I'm painting, I like to be super hands-on and using the eyedropper is a really frequent tool, so I set my eyedropper to work with a finger press. If you want to do this, go to the wrench menu and tap on prefs, then go to gesture controls. If you select the eyedropper and press touch and hold here and set the delay just a little bit, you'll be able to do exactly that. I don't like having it set to touch because it's too easy to make quick errors. Having it with just a little bit of delay makes it a very deliberate action. The selection tool is pretty self-explanatory, but here's some stuff that you might not use or know about. If you can't quite make your selection out, go to the wrench menu and go to prefs, and down here selection mask visibility. It'll increase the selection mask so you can more easily see what you're doing. If you have a selection that you want to use later on, you can save it for later using save and load. Finally, if you want to quickly redo the last selection you made, press and hold on the icon and it will reload the one that you just had. Really handy if you accidentally press something. If you have a black and white image that you really want to colourise quickly, you can go to the adjustments menu and select gradient map. Here, you will be presented with a bunch of gradients that overlay over the current layer that you have selected. You can use any of these predefined maps, modify them, or make your own. A gradient map very quickly assigns a colour from the predefined gradient here to the image's pixels according to the brightness value from black to white. Let's say that you have loads of layers in your image, but you want to merge them all together without destroying all the layers. Well, you can do that easily from the Add menu. If you press Copy Canvas and paste it, you now have a new layer with all of the layers that are currently visible in your canvas that you can modify to your heart's content. In the Canvas menu, there's several options. I'll cover Animation Assist in another video, but quickly, if you enable it, you get a new UI element and treats each layer in your hierarchy as a frame in an animation. You can use this app to make animations like my intro reel. Page Assist is similar to Animation Assist. It creates a new UI menu that shows each layer as a separate page, handy for making booklets. Drawing Guide it creates a new UI element that assists with drawing. Create a new guide by tapping here. Tap on a layer to enable assisted drawing, and now you can only draw along the lines of the grid. Edit the drawing guide for lots of different styles of grids. You can even use symmetry to create really cool mandala patterns. The reference window is fantastic. Similar to Photoshop's Navigator, you can use it as a zoomed out overview when painting. Really good to use on big paintings to stop yourself getting too focused on small areas. You can also import your own image as references, or open the face cam to paint on your face. It's quite fun. When you click the Layers menu, you see all your layers in hierarchy order. If you tap on the thumbnail of the layer, this menu appears with some common tasks. Two you might not know about are the Mask and Clipping Mask. Tapping Mask creates a new layer connected to the current layer, and it's a grayscale image. If you select this image and paint it in black, it hides the current layer underneath but it doesn't erase the pixels, meaning that you can undo it by painting in white. Black is 0% opacity, and white is 100%. Shades of grey in between can be used for varying opacity. This is great for non-destructive editing, because if you want to change it later, you can, unlike erasing. A clipping mask shares many of the same traits, but is slightly different. Selecting clipping mask makes the current layer clip to the one directly beneath it. Instead of using black and white, the clipping is tied directly to the opacity of the pixels in the layer beneath it. You can use this to design a clipping mask before applying it. Let's talk about Alpha Lock. 
The alpha channel of a digital image relates to the opacity. A pixel with an alpha of zero is invisible, but it might still have an RGB value. If you alpha lock a channel, you can't draw outside of the current layer, but you can change the pixel values of it inside. This is great for silhouette painting. You can also do this quickly by two finger swiping right, which adds and disables an alpha lock. Finally, let's talk about colour profiles. If you're going to be printing any of your artworks, you'll need to use a CYMK colour profile. This uses pixel values that a printer can more easily convert to get accurate prints. You can't change an RGB image to a CYMK later on, so you'll need to set up a canvas with this in mind. To do this, press this icon here and go to Colour Profile and change from RGB to CYMK. Let's go with Generic, but if you're working with a specific printer, you should look up the profile which will work best. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or tricks that I missed, then let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, then let me know by dropping a like or subscribing. If you want to support more videos in the future and get access to my custom brushes, maybe consider becoming a patron. Thanks again. World peace, Ed.